Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the Moki or the Mogi i7s. Don't know how to say that name. Um, I was reached out to by these guys and asked if I wanted to make a video on it. Um, I have been paid for this review, but I'm still going to be very, very honest uh, with the thing. Um, I should definitely put it out there that I'm not 100% clued up on Android uh, gaming stuff. So although I have managed to get a bunch of stuff working on this, uh, some of it I'm sure you will have a much better chance of getting it to work better. Um, but that being said, so this thing is a phone. Uh, it's got a replaceable battery, which I think is very, very cool. Although getting into the back of this thing is not easy it's quite a uh, it's quite a difficult process and if you have a sore nail like I currently do because I've been restoring an old 80s road bike um, it's very difficult to get into it but I will show you for the sake of it um, inside there is an expandable micro SD card storage a replaceable battery two sim card slots and you can see these stereo speakers on the back there um, that is a point worth mentioning they are on the back as well as a camera and a flash not sure what the specifications of a camera are actually oh rear camera 16 megapixels got six gigabytes of ram 64 um gigabytes of onboard uh, storage which is very very nice as well the screen is six inches um, and it's 1920 by 1080p so it's a stupidly high resolution screen uh, I'll put the specs on the screen right now but it's basically running like one of the top of the range uh, processors that are currently out there um, other than that you know it's got all your normal typical um, Android phone stuff power button volume button um, Speed, obviously you've got your um, headphone, uh, sorry, your earpiece, microphone, it has actually got a headphone and he charges off a USB-C which is obviously uh, pretty much the standard now. Um, so yeah, this thing is $400. Not going to beat around the bush that is bloody expensive but it's not very expensive for a very very high powered phone if you take a look at some of the Huawei stuff in the similar range of this specification it will basically be a little bit more expensive than this so this still is quite a good budget phone um the build quality is very nice it's obviously it's all plastic um it's gonna be quite difficult for me to actually film this stuff but in the box, it did include a glass screen lens protector, so I have got a nice glass screen protector on there, which is very, very nice. Uh, the rest of the phone is that sort of matte finish, rubbery texture stuff, which, as we know from the um, Gizmondo, doesn't age well, I think it's fair to say. Um, and interestingly, as I said, um, the Moki or Mogi logo on the back there is pretty much rubbing off. I'm not sure um, if my hands are like acidic or my logo was just not printed on very well, but um, it's literally rubbing off as we speak. That's pretty much going to be enough waffle then. Let's take a look at the actual device itself. So it currently looks um, just like a stock Android phone. Obviously has a uh, accelerometer in there so you can turn it all around. So I've made it look as stock Android as possible because it was really, really awful with like some weird warrior app game wallpaper and loads of crazy Chinese apps that I've just moved as far away as I possibly can. It obviously looks sort of similar to a PlayStation Vita. You've got two analog sticks on the front, your D-pad, your action buttons, L and R, uh, which don't really press in very much. Uh, volume obviously power there as well. So what can this play? I hear you scream. Well, everything. Uh, it's an Android phone, so it basically can run anything that Android can emulate, which at the moment is pretty much everything up to the N64. Uh, obviously, it's going to play GameCube, Dreamcast, PlayStation 1, um, all of those sort of, I don't know what that is, third-gen console gaming? I don't know. It's not going to play PlayStation uh, 3 and anything higher than that, but um, it does actually play PSP as well, which is really cool. Um, I have a handful of things that I've managed to get work, which I'm going to show you. Uh, SNES, PlayStation 1, PlayStation Portable, N64, Nintendo DS, Mega Drive, and Game Boy Advance. Um, I haven't tried Game Boy, regular Game Boy, but if it can run, obviously, one of these, then it's going to be able to run that. Fine. So I'll start off then by showing you Mega Drive, which looks absolutely stunning. The start and select buttons are sort of capacitive, like resistive buttons. I don't really know how to uh, describe that. Um, but as you press them on the screen, they sort of uh, they vibrate the phone, which makes them feel like they are um, physical buttons, when in fact they are not tricking my uh, simple mind. So yeah, this works absolutely flawlessly. There is actually some Android... Um, Mega Drive game as well that you can get, which obviously would make this look even nicer, but in order to play the official 
uh, Mega Drive ROM, you'd have to go it through emulation. So yeah, this looks absolutely brilliant. There's obviously no flaws at all. Um, emulation inherently is never gonna be perfect because after all, it's emulation, but it's pretty damn close. The sounds are great, the visuals are great. It's, it's a very, very stunning screen with lots of very nice colors. Um, so yeah, the whole thing just looks really, really nice. Let's go out of here and we'll try um, Super Nintendo. Yeah, it's absolutely seamless. Uh, obviously you can play with the D-pad as well. Some games, it's gonna feel a little bit weird playing with the analog stick, uh, but because you have that option there of both analog and um, digital, or I don't know if that works, analog and uh, D-pad, a uh, directional pad, it's very, very nice. Next up is a little bit of N64. I can't remember how to how to grab this guy. I don't remember what you actually have to do. But as you can see, it's running absolutely brilliantly. I, I haven't got a clue how to kill this dude. Next thing I'm gonna show you is PlayStation 1. Now, I have had a lot of trouble trying to get this to work on this phone. I'm just not sure how to really do the whole um, Android uh, ROM and emulation type thing. Um, so I haven't managed to get the buttons to map onto this application. Um, a lot of the applications, it just does it automatically. You literally just download the app and then all of these action buttons and the D-pad and R L and R triggers all just work. Um, this one, however, doesn't. There is a way that you can amend it physically, um, but I just can't work out how to do it. I'm just not very competent with modern Android stuff. PlayStation 1 on here looks absolutely stunning as well. Um, I'm very bad at this game, uh, but it look, does look very, very nice. Crash Bandicoot, uh, they recently remade this for the Switch. Um, I wasn't a big fan of it, really, um, but hey-ho. Ah, I died. Uh, yeah, not a lot to say about that. Just works very well. PlayStation Portable PSP works very, very well. Um, honestly, it looks stunning. It's seamless. Um, it's crazy to be playing PlayStation um, Portable PSP on a phone. It just feels ridiculous. The screen is uh, a really, really stunning display as well. So very, very nice. Um, yeah, I'm just playing a little bit of Lego Batman, a game that I actually played a lot when I was younger. Very, very fun game. And the screen, as you can see, is gorgeous. Time to play a little bit of Game Boy Advance, one of the ones that you guys will really be a lot more interested in than the rest of them, because obviously this is a very handheld focused uh, channel. Um, this is a little bit of Metal Slug, uh, which is a fantastic game and visually very, very impressive. So. No slowdown at all. Uh, it's seamless. It is the most seamless Game Boy Advance emulation I've ever played in my life. It's just ridiculous. Um, oh, seems to be maybe some sort of a button combination exits you out of the game, which is not very convenient. So here is a little bit of Minish Cap for some of the Zelda fans out there. Um, I think it's absolutely ridiculous how they've managed to, you know, upscale uh, this screen yet just retain such a lovely quality. Uh, it seems like pressing up on the um, this button here uh, constantly just opens the menu, which is going to be a little bit annoying. Um, but that's just the way that this works. 
Um, yeah, I mean, this just looks absolutely stunning. The colors are beautiful. I don't even th think I've seen half of these colors um, on the Game Boy before. It just, just so happens that this screen is a very, very high quality screen. Personally, I don't know if I would have been able to have afforded uh, forking out $400 on this thing, but if you have got the money and you are looking for something very, very nice, um, then obviously this thing is a fantastic one to go for. It's probably better than the GPD XD, all those sorts of things. Um, if you do want to check out this, link will be in the description, as um, I'm sure you have been aware. Um, there is an argument that you would be able to just get a regular Android phone, one that you've probably already got. Um, and then just put the controls on there. Um, and then saying that, some people don't even want the physical controls. You can just use the on-screen ones. Um, but I guess, uh, you know, having an actual dedicated device means that you can just focus this on, uh, you know, being a t tablet to be gaming on. It's not really a phone. Like it's, I mean, it's a little bit big as a phone. You would also get that joystick. Like it, it fits perfectly in my ear. So um, yeah, I don't know, but. Look at that. I mean, that is just beautiful. Look at those colors. What? Ridiculous. Right, um, I think there's only one thing left for me to show you, and that is Nintendo DS. Now, the Nintendo DS emulation is quite a weird one. Um, obviously, you'd want to play it in that portrait orientation because obviously it's two screens on top of each other, but that isn't really going to be possible with the button controls, so you have to have it like that. Um, and then the, what that means it does is it puts it side by side. Now that is very, very playable. Obviously you've still got use of the touch screen here um, to, to actually make the bottom touch screen in the DS work. Uh, the actual gameplay itself is very nice. I've had a bit of problems with some of the cut sequences having a little bit of slowdown. You might be able to adjust the uh, frame skip in order to sort that out. But uh, yeah, for the most part, it's very, very nice. Um, the DS is obviously a little bit of a um, sort of higher demand console compared to some of the 32-bit and 16-bit um, emulation that we've just played on. But yeah, I mean, it works very, very nicely. Uh, the sounds are a little bit off. That could just be the ROM that I've used or something. DS is probably one that I would play a lot of because the DS was a very, very cool console in my growing up. But yeah, there you go. It works very, very nicely. It looks absolutely fantastic. And that is pretty much gonna conclude the video of the Moki i7S. It's an absolutely awesome piece of kit. I'm very, very impressed with it. Thank you for sending it out, Moki. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I will try my best to answer them. It's a very powerful phone with a very, very nice build quality with some fantastic buttons and joysticks. Uh, my biggest complaint would definitely be uh, the spacing of, um, of these two things. You know, when I'm trying to run uh, on some games and then jump by doing that, um, I'm hitting the joystick. I'm not sure if you can see that there, but that would be my biggest complaint. That might be because I've got big hands and big thumbs, but yeah, other than that, it's an absolutely, absolutely, absolutely incredible gaming piece of kit. Really mind-blowing. I'm seriously going to be playing a lot of this thing. Um, I hope you guys have all enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.